Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. The next video I'm gonna upload is gonna be different from anything I've ever put out on my channel before. It's gonna talk about topics like mental health, depression, and suicide. It's gonna be a lot to take in. And in order to give you all the information you need, I have to explain some things first. About a month ago, on the 18th of August to be exact, I met a girl named Carla. That night, my boyfriend and his brother had some friends over at our house, and Carla came over with her boyfriend. I had known who she was because we actually had the same drama class in high school. When I was a senior, she was a junior. I remember her seeming like a really nice girl. She just seemed very reserved, but Throughout high school, I never got to know her on a more personal level. From what I remember, there was a period of time when she just stopped coming to school. But like I said, I didn't know her personally, so I guess I just really didn't think much of it. But fast forward three years later, and here she is in my home. That night, everyone was casually drinking. Even I was sipping on some forbidden apple juice, if you will. So eventually, because Carla and I were the only two girls there, we just started talking. I remember her asking me how I was gonna get home that night, and I told her that I actually lived here with my boyfriend. And so then I asked her how she was gonna get home and then she said that her and her boyfriend were gonna uber home Because they also live together. So within like the first two minutes of talking we already have something in common Usually I save the story of why I moved out of my mom's house until I'm at least semi comfortable with someone but We just both started talking about our problems. It might have just been because we were a little tipsy but um, we got really personal Really quick, we were talking about a lot of personal things in our lives. So here I am listening to her tell some of her stories and I can tell that some of the things she's talking about have deeply upset her and, and they kind of go back. They have roots in her that, that make her still upset with them. And then out of nowhere, she says, and that's why I tried to kill myself. And it was like the whole room got quiet. Everyone was still drinking, talking, laughing, having a good time, but in that moment, all I can focus on were those words. And it caught me off guard. And in a matter of seconds, it was like I hadn't drank anything all night. I wasn't tipsy, I wasn't buzzed, I was sober, just like that. So I set my drink down and I moved closer to her and I'm just staring at her, just trying to analyze what she told me, analyze her, just process the entire situation and I can see her getting emotional. And I can't quite remember the conversation we had word for word, so I'm not gonna try to mimic it, but I remember how I felt in that moment. The entire night, I was looking at this girl who I thought I had all figured out. I saw a beautiful girl and thought, wow, look at her. She has it all figured out. Everything is perfect in her life. She's doing great. And in reality, I didn't even know the half of it. I really didn't know anything. She told me some of her story that night and I didn't want to pry everything out of her because that was the first night that we were actually talking to each other. So the rest of the night we were just talking and enjoying each other's company. I know I joke around a lot about not having any friends, but in a way it's, it's kind of true because everyone is busy working on themselves, working on their lives. And so it was nice to just sit down and have a conversation with someone and actually not want them to leave. The night ended around like four in the morning. So um, then she went home. I remember waking up the next morning and just laying in bed thinking of everything that we had talked about. And then I checked my phone and she had tweeted me the night before. At Alyssa Ray, I love you, wow. And I know she was drunk, but I actually felt like we had a connection. And in a weird way, I felt like we were supposed to meet that night because even though this was at my own house, I, I swear to you, and I even told her this, I almost didn't go. I was this close to spending the entire night in my room and not going. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met Carla. Or at least I wouldn't have met her that night. So we started texting and eventually she told me her story. And our conversations were literally paragraphs long, like four different messages, paragraphs long. And in those texts, she told me that she had attempted suicide three times twice when she was at the age of 15 and once when she was 17. She told me how alone she felt and how her depression kept her from having close relationships. She went into detail about how she attempted suicide. She told me that she grew up in a home where mental health was never a topic of discussion. And when she felt depressed and alone, she thought that that was normal. And so she didn't know how to deal with it properly. And it's scary because in many households, 
mental health is not a topic of discussion. In my own home, we never talked about anything like that. I never even had the sex talk, and that's insane. To go through life growing and learning, but skipping those important conversations. I asked her if she had ever thought about sharing her story because I thought a lot of people could benefit from it, especially kids that were her age that are going through the same thing that she went through. So I asked her if she ever thought about posting a thread on Twitter or a lengthy Facebook status or making a YouTube video. She said that she had always thought about it, but that she thought no one would ever really care to listen because she doesn't have a big platform. To which I replied, but I think if you start that conversation, so many people will be willing to listen and at least try to comprehend the things you went through. I'm just gonna throw this out there. I have a platform. It's not huge or anything, but if you actually wanna share your story, I can help you get it out there. We could start a conversation together. She also told me that she was scared that people might act negatively toward her story or belittle her, tell her that she was lying or exaggerating or whatever, because again, she grew up with that behavior towards mental health. And so she was concerned that if she made a video with me that um, she'd be ridiculed again. And so I told her, I know the internet can sometimes be a judgmental place, but so far with all the videos I've put out, my audience has been nothing but accepting and supportive. A lot of people would care and I'm sure of it. I can help you share your story if you want. No pressure, of course. Just letting you know that you can always use your voice on my channel. And then she said, I would love to do that, but I'm so scared honestly because I know I would have loved to have someone to relate to back then to help me because I felt like I was going through this all by myself and like no one understood. But it's so scary because it's so close and personal. I feel like I wouldn't know what to do or say. I really wanna give it a shot though, honestly, and I feel like if I have you helping me, it'll make things so much easier. And then I said, I don't wanna sway your decision, but I think maybe if we went the route of a very easygoing interview where I ask questions that prompt you to tell a certain part of your story, I think that would make it a little easier for you. Plus, it's not like it's live TV. We can reshoot something you messed up on or didn't say how you wanted to. I can edit in or out anything you want and you would have the final say before it would go public. I know it's scary to think about your truth finally being out in the open, but I think you'd be really proud of yourself if you did. I know I would, and I believe in you. As many of us know, there is a big stigma around mental health, and that needs to change. It's unacceptable that we aren't teaching the youth how to take care of themselves, and that as adults, we can't carry a conversation about this because it makes someone uncomfortable. I can assure you that there's gonna be very mature topics in this next video, so if you're under the age of 12, I suggest that you ask your parents to watch it with you, and hopefully that can start a conversation between you and your family. As mature as this conversation is, mental illness starts young. Fifty percent of mental illnesses start in kids around the age of 14. So yes, I do think it's appropriate for people around that age to at least start learning. I really wanted to make this video, one, because I think Carla has a really great story that can benefit a lot of people. Two, because I think that mental health is something that needs to be talked about more often. I don't think a lot of YouTubers in general talk about it. It's not talked about enough. My videos are usually more on the lighter, happier side of things, but sometimes they do get serious and sometimes I do talk about things that are bothering me and I think that that's normal. Everyone is going through some shit. Everyone has demons. Everyone is struggling. Everyone has some type of struggle. It would be wrong for me to not at least touch on that and that's what I want to do with this video. I want to keep the conversation going. What are you the most nervous about? How people are gonna react. I can't even look at myself in the mirror. Like, I remember I would like stare at myself for hours and just cry and just yell at myself and just be like, you're so worthless. Like, you're nothing. Like, nobody loves you. No one's ever going to love you. Like, where did that come from? And that, I have no idea where that comes from. I wish that I had friends that I could go out with, but instead I'm just at home doing nothing, hating myself having a panic attack alone. I put myself here, like, there was so many ways that my life could go to, but it ended up here. Like, how is that? What's so wrong with me? 